In this lesson, we're going to work with classes and objects. A class forms a pattern that we can use multiple times. So a class is like a pattern for a dress, and we can create as many dresses as we want from the same pattern. Each dress would be an instance of that pattern. When we create the dress from the pattern, we would be said in programming to instantiate, or the process is called instantiation, and the each dress would be an object of the dress pattern or the class. So we're going to create a class named course. To create the class, we use the keyword class, the class name, which is course, and pass it object. And note that the class names are capitalized. And if you had multiple words in here, you'd use camelback notation. So if we said course description, we would capitalize the second letter as well, the letter of the second, first letter of the second word. And they call it camelback notation because each word starts with the capital letter, which looks like the hump in the camel's back. When you create a class, you should have a doc string, which is a special kind of comment that explains what the class does. You begin it with a triple quote, and between the triple quotes, you have a, a thorough description of what the class will do. You should list what its attributes are, what's it, in other words, what it, variables it holds, as well as what the class is for. Then it, when you want to use a class, you'll create a single instance of it. Again, the process is called instantiation, and the instance is called an object. So here we're creating logic as an object. I should have done this with a lowercase l, because it is not a class, and only classes should be capitalized. It'll let you do it, but it's a bad habit. Okay, so you can create an object which is an instance of course, logic is an instance of course, and then I can assign values to it. Each object has a specific point in memory, and we are assigning subportions here. So we've got logic.department, and I'm assigning the value programming or PRG, logic.number, 105, logic.section, 003, logic.title, programming logic. And we can use any of those attributes by including the logic with the dot notation, logic.department, we'd print logic.department. If you just print logic, you'll simply get a memory address. Let's see how it works. So we have PRG because we printed the logic.department, which we'd set to PRG, and then we have the memory location of the logic object. You can create as many instances and here I'm going to do a Control R, that's my replace. And so I'm going to find logic and I'm going to replace with logic, all lowercase, replace all. And that is a nice thing to know how to do in here. Okay, so I fixed that so my logic statement is lowercase. So I've copied the information from the first program over here, and I've added to it. I've now created a function called createCourse. I've created an instance of our course object, which I named C, 
and then I'm getting information from the end user to create and return the object that we created. So you can return a full object. So I have course one equals create course, and then we can print it out. And then I have course two equals create course. So C is a temporary object variable, and those objects will be created into these new locations. And you'll notice that I can then print any of these. They do not replace each other. Each object is in a separate memory location, so I'm not overwriting any of the other objects. Let's give it a shot. So it's going to ask me for the department code, course number, section, title. And then it prints out the object. And I can do this again. So I've created three instances of my class, or three objects. Each one of these is a separate object, and they can all exist at the same time. You can have as many objects of any given class as you'd like at any given time.